coming to the topic of keeping precept, you must do it to realize the power of precepts and merits leading to virtue, wholesomeness, and blessings. You must witness them to understand and to have the faith. And you will go this way because if you really keep your precepts and you never violate them over a certain period of time, your life transforms, you become different. And you will have good birth. It seems one of the most important criteria for having a good birth to be born in the Deva Rhyme is to keep the five precepts. If you can keep the five precepts, uphold it with sincerity, with faith and diligence, you will definitely have the parami to have the good birth to be born in the Deva Rhyme. Yeah. Or at least to have the good karma the good blessings, because all these precepts lead to virtue. The precept got two parts. One is avoiding evil, means you don't harm others, you protect yourself. So when you don't harm others through avoiding all evil, you protect your negativity karma. So there is no condition for all these things to hit back come back to you. And by keeping precepts, your virtue is fantastic. Even not harming others, not causing problem to others. Yeah. It's like wearing masks. You not only protect yourself from falling into the evil states of negativity of karma, you even protect others. So precept has that power that people cannot understand. Then to go beyond avoiding evil is the second aspect of precept which very few people understand. Means to cultivate virtue and blessings wherever there is condition. Means the ennobler. You not only don't kill, you develop compassion. You not only don't steal, don't cheat, don't deceive, don't misappropriate things. You develop the ennobler of generosity, kindness, goodness, wholesomeness. So all this is what precept is all about. And precepts generates a lot of virtue. A virtuous person is a person who really uphold his precept, his or her precepts. And you can do that, I assure you. Your life will be beautiful. That's why I do not underestimate precepts. Precepts are very important. Every pre-puja, we renew our precept. Every day, we're supposed to renew our precept. That is to constantly remind you of the advice of the Buddha of the importance of holding on to this precept. But it's never worthwhile violating the precept. That's why the advice of the Buddha is sabbe, is all evil, papasa akarana. You have to avoid all evil, not just avoid evil, all evil. That's why you have to really uphold your precepts. And you need to do that over a period of time consistently with faith, with understanding to see the result. And when the result manifests, you will believe because it's like you are protected. You are very blessed. That's like Ayamita who traveled with me as a group on spiritual trip and other things. They will know. It's like we are very blessed. We are being like somehow protected. And a lot of things go our way. Then the weather too, like very kind. And everything, sometimes even the traffic, you cannot believe. It just smoothened out and everything turned out for the better. It's like a blessing in this guy. 
there are many things that are meant to be for be. So we can avoid disaster and all those things because virtue protect. During the time of the Buddha, people ask the Buddha, what is the highest protection? Surprisingly, the Buddha answer, nothing else protect you except your virtue. Virtue is your highest protection. Then the highest well, the Buddha's answer really make a, a lot of people shake their head. They cannot understand why he said it that way. The highest protection, he said, is virtue. Not to have bodyguard, guns and all those things. He said the opposite. Not to train yourself in Kung Fu and all those things. But the highest protection in life is your virtue. When you have virtue, you are very well protected. Then when it comes to wealth, the highest wealth, people also ask the Buddha, what constitutes the highest wealth? His very wise and very simple answer is contentment. You are contented. You are very wealthy. You have the highest wealth. Without contentment, you still want, you still have craving. So how can you say you are wealthy? You are still not wealthy. But when you are contented with whatever you have, you are already wealthy. In that sense that there is no more need. You don't really need anything else. Where you are contented with life, contented with the way things unfold. You have the Dhamma. You have the understanding, the wisdom. That's why the Dhamma way is very beautiful. Yeah. Virtue is really beautiful. Without virtue, there is no Dhamma. Ultimately, whatever cultivation you do, I always share with Kayamita, you can recall, you can uh, recall what I used to say. Means if you are attentive, you will hear this part. Yeah. Without virtue, there is no real cultivation. And without wisdom, there is no real virtue. Virtue comes from wisdom. When you have developed the cultivation of the Dhamma correctly, the wisdom that arises will naturally bring forth the understanding to make you virtuous. Why? Because when you have the Dhamma, when you already awaken, you are incapable of evil. So the absence of evil will make you virtuous. You don't have to be good. The absence of evil is good. The absence of evil is virtue, virtuous. So a virtuous person is an enlightened person who has the Dhamma, who will never, never violate their precepts anymore. The three sets of pure precepts, they will uphold them. And they will never, never break any of that yeah, precepts. So Dharma cultivation has many levels, many understanding. Not until you have reached the tail end. There are a lot of things about cultivation the cultivator cannot really comprehend. Initially, it's mostly the superficial practices at the thought level. Okay. Then at the four right effort level. Then after that, you move on to the wisdom part, the purification of mind, the meditation, the cultivation, the silent mind, the direct seeing, the insight, the awakening. And during that time, it's all mindfulness. No more thought pace. No more effort. So, Dhamma is very beautiful. In a way, it's quite abstract. In the sense that it's beyond thought, beyond mind. You cannot use the mundane mind, the knowledge and the concept to try to grasp at it and develop the understanding, thinking that you know. 
Those are knowledge which are not wisdom. It will not lead to awakening, transformation. It will not lead to wisdom to liberate the mind. So all these understanding are very important. 